Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game with a review of Warco, the expandable card game. So what is it? Well, let's take a look at the box and um hang, hang uh, yeah. Well, according to the box it's nothing. Uh, that's not quite right. Let's take a look at the back of the cards, does that help? Ah. Well, it tells us the name of the game and that it's an expandable card game. Sheesh, this is not helping much. Okay, what the game is, is it is a dueling game, but it's a multiplayer dueling game. However, I'm not going to talk too much about that, because this is two can play that game, and I was only sent the two decks, so I've only been able to try this two player. Now, this is a game currently seeking funding on Kickstarter, and that is why the lack of a proper box. They've just used generic boxes in order to keep costs down on the prototypes. So, how does it all work? Well, it's your typical dueling game, really, where, you know, you'll be bringing out creatures, or in this case, vessels or ships, you know, cards that you will be combating with, as well as having support cards for those. But what makes this one slightly different is rather than fiddly tracking of life and all of this, a card is either in play or dead, and your life points are your deck, so you're eliminated once you run out of cards. So, why don't we take a look at the table and you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. In Warco, you'll create your deck of 50 cards, or you can use one of the preset constructed decks that come in the Kickstarter. Once you've done this, here is the table kind of part way through, because you'll have three spots that you can put machines in, and machines are like your creatures, they're what allow you to attack, where the amount at the top is the attack value, then below that is the energy use, then you've got your little picture, and then a description of any power that it might have. So, while in play, all enemy machines strength minus 15. The yellow tokens here are representing the energy used, and each player has 10 energy at the start of the game. So, this player here has 4 left in reserve. This blue token on this card here is marking the fact that this has to have been out for one turn before it can attack. So this indicates it's had that turn and can now attack. So you can see here that the other player has used all their energy. But let's say it's this player's turn now. The way a turn will work is your first draw cards. So if you have fewer than four cards, you must draw up to four. After that, you can draw a card at a time and decide when to stop, but you can't have more than seven cards, so you'll end up with between four and seven cards. So this player here has this hand of cards, and they'll draw one, and they'll draw another one, and then they'll say, we'll stop there. So they've got four energy available. They can now put their cards that they've bought into play, and they can put them either face up or face down. So for example, this, Athena here has a trap effect and a trap effect means that it'll happen if this gets destroyed. So we want to hide this from the enemy so we're going to play it face down. Now it doesn't use any energy until it gets turned face up. We're also going to play this face down which will enable us to deflect an attack if it comes our way. The one problem with playing cards face down like this is that if you have to turn it over and you don't have enough energy to so say we had to turn this one over and it survived and then we turn this one over which costs four energy but we only have two the card instead gets destroyed and goes to your discard pile but the benefit of this is you cannot play to cards outside of your own turn so if you want to play an effect such as this one that will neutralize an attack during an opponent's turn you have to have played the card face down during your turn. Once you're done playing cards, you can then attack. You can only ever attack with one machine a turn. And if the opponent has machines like this, you do an indirect attack, which means you attack one of their machines. So this technology here is actually meaning that all submachines of the enemy have zero strength, which is really handy because they've got these really powerful Submachines here, like this one costs, uses four, five energy and has 49 strength. 
but it counts as zero strength currently. So they're going to use their centipede and attack and destroy it. At which point they get the energy back, so they've got energy to use now, and the card goes to their discards. Also, they have to discard the top card off of their deck, just immediately, no matter what it is, there. But let's say they had none of these cards out, and we attack them. They then have to discard three cards off the top of their deck. Then it's the end of their turn and they have to discard a card. So they must discard one card from their hand, so they'll discard this card. But they also have the opportunity to discard one technology, but only one of the two technologies that they have. So they're not going to discard that one, but let's say they want to free up space to play something else. They'll discard this one, for example, but they don't have to do that. It is optional. At this point, it's the end of their turn. Play proceeds to the next player's turn. It just carries on like this until one player's deck has been completely eroded and they have no cards in hand. Then that player is eliminated. And once there's only one player remaining, they're the winner. So that is Warco, the expandable card game. What do I think of it? Well, let's start with the artwork, because the artwork is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. Yes, it is generic sci-fi artwork, but by golly, it's gorgeous. You know, you've got green and then this grey ship here. And this one, look at this, with rockets going. Absolutely gorgeous, this energy blasting out. You've got this ship here, you know, it's so many cards, each card has unique and different artwork, and it is all absolutely gorgeous. I cannot stress enough how nice the artwork is on this game. Well, what about the components? Well, it's a prototype, I can't really talk much about components. The prototype cards are okay, I think, I, as far as I'm aware, they have said that the final version will have nicer cards, but I can't really comment on that. So, what else is there to talk about? Well, let's talk about one thing component-wise that I think I can talk about, and that is the inclusion of these two little cards here in each of the different decks, and there will be six decks available during the Kickstarter. One gives you story and you know, just a quick guide reference sheet that's generic to all the decks, you know, it's useful to have. The other one is specific to each of the decks, and this just gives you tips on the nature of that deck and how best to utilise it. I think that's great, fantastic addition for first-time players, because you can just kind of go, well, what deck do you want to use? Here's the pros and cons for each. And then someone can just quickly and easily pick which to play with. So what about the gameplay then? Well, I do like the fact that your deck is your health. It reduces the admin that this type of game tends to have, where it's like, all right, let's get a piece of pen and paper out so we can track things. Right, that's you've got this many, you've got this many. But then it introduces other things and that's why there's this pile of tokens to help you track these things you've got the energy okay that's not too bad to track but you've got to track it still and then oh i've got to remember that i've got this many down this many up and yes you do find these tokens very helpful for doing that but it means you've got to use those tokens it creates a fiddly admin aspect to this game that they'd removed by having the deck be hit points, which is a shame. And then lots of the different card effects have their own little things to track. So that is kind of a shame. I would have liked to have seen the reduced admin that they had with regards to the deck carry through the rest of the game somehow. I'm not saying I know how they could have done that. It just would have been nice. And it's not really a problem that you have it there because these tokens do work fine for tracking everything. It doesn't really stop you being able to play the game and enjoy it. One thing I do have to kind of talk about is balance. And I don't know if it's just the two decks that I was sent, but one of them did seem to be much stronger. And I, I mean much stronger. It would always win. It never lost in any of the games we played, which was 10 games. Um, the same deck won every 10 games. And it wasn't that I was the person playing it and I'm better than everyone. You know, we were switching up who had what decks. I was playing with different people. 
and still that deck always won and it didn't even just win by a small margin it always won by at least 20 cards and when you think there's only 50 cards in the deck that's pretty extreme but the nature of this game is not that you have to use these decks as they come. Yes, you have the opportunity to, and if you had more of the decks, you could kind of go, well, this one's more effective against this one, this one against that one, etc. And that may be the case with these. But if you have all of those cards, and each of these decks is 50 cards, so if you get all six decks, that's 300 cards, and you can then construct your own deck of 50 cards. You can kind of go, well I don't like the way this card works, I don't like the way that card works, it doesn't feel it works for this deck, I'll change it out, I'll put this one in. You know, if you like that sort of deck construction, this game, out of the bat, is going to give you a ton of cards with which to do that with. So, what do I think from my own personal opinion? I did enjoy it, it's probably not one I would look to keep in my collection. I love the artwork, I do think it works well, it's nice having the cards be your health. The whole energy thing helps equalise the playing field at any given moment. You know, it helps stop someone just running into the lead. And on top of that, they have this kind of catch-up mechanic which is a bit tacked on that if someone is being too trampled into the ground in that either they can't play machines which are you know your creatures or they have no energy available you know because card effects have reduced it so it's impossible for them to do either of these things they can discard five cards which is five health of course not to mention cards that they could potentially use to destroy one enemy card so that does help a bit but it's quite difficult to get into that spot in the first place and um, yeah it, it's a fun dueling game if you're interested in you know deck construction it's going to give you a huge amount of options and it has beautiful artwork so that is my thoughts of warco the expandable card game i do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and of course if you have please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family and do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook or on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching. And bye for now.